If you've ever stood there and noticed that your urinary stream just isn't what it used to be, or you're getting up more at night, I understand exactly how that quiet fear feels. But what's really going on will completely change how you think about prostate health. By the end of this explainer, you will know the real cure rates, you'll understand the new science that's offering incredible hope, and you will see the single most powerful action you can take to protect your long-term health. So let's talk about David. David's 58, and he started waking up, you know, two, then three times a night. He also noticed that frustrating delay before the stream would start. Doctors call it urinary hesitancy. Now, a lot of the time, this is just a benign enlarged prostate, totally normal. But for David, and maybe for some of you watching, it planted a seed of worry. And that fear of the unknown, it's real. That's what we're going to dismantle today, piece by piece, with the facts. Okay, so we've talked about that feeling, that anxiety David had. Now it's time to switch gears and look at the cold, hard data. We're going to separate the fear from the reality. So what do the numbers actually say about a man's chances? This part, this is the first big reveal. This is the question, isn't it? It's the one that probably brought you here in the first place. You hear that diagnosis and your mind just races. Is this it? Or is there a completely different story? Well, let's get right to the answer. Just look at that number for a second, 98%. According to the National Cancer Institute, that's the five-year relative survival rate for men whose prostate cancer is still localized or in the nearby region. So what does that really mean? It means that, on average, men with this diagnosis are 98% as likely to be alive five years down the road as men who don't have the cancer at all. This isn't some rare best-case scenario. For the vast, vast majority of men, this is the expected outcome. So when we say localized, what are we talking about? It's actually really simple. It just means the cancer hasn't spread outside of the prostate gland. And here's the key. This is the most common situation at diagnosis. Why? Because of modern screening, like the PSA blood test. We're catching it so much earlier than we used to, right when it's at its most treatable and its most curable stage. So, I really want this to sink in. This is the big message from this first part. For the average guy who gets a prostate cancer diagnosis today, a complete cure isn't just some long shot hope. It is by far the most probable outcome of their journey. Okay, so now that we've set that hopeful foundation, let's have an honest talk about the more difficult cases. You know, part of being real on this journey is talking about the challenges. What happens if the cancer isn't found early? What if it's already spread? We have to look at this head on because this is actually where medicine is making some of its most mind blowing progress. This right here, this shows a huge game-changing shift in how doctors are thinking. In the past, when cancer had spread, what's called metastatic or stage four, it was seen as a binary thing. Either you cure it or you don't. But the new goal is something called durable control. The idea is to turn advanced prostate cancer into a manageable chronic illness, something you live with, kind of like how people manage diabetes. The whole focus shifts to extending a man's life and, just as importantly, preserving the quality of that life. Now, a foundational treatment for this is something called androgen deprivation therapy, or ADT. It's pretty clever, actually. Just think of testosterone as high-octane fuel for prostate cancer cells. Well, ADT basically cuts off the fuel supply. It can be incredibly good at shrinking tumors or slowing them way down. But here's the thing. For advanced disease, it's not a cure by itself. It's the solid foundation upon which we are now building a whole new set of incredible weapons. And this, this is where things get truly exciting. We are on the edge of a new horizon of hope. We're going to look at the amazing new science that is completely rewriting the rules, even for men with the most advanced forms of this disease. It's a simple rule of battle, right? You can't fight an enemy effectively if you don't know exactly where it is. And for years, that was a massive problem with prostate cancer. Old scans like CTs and bone scans, they just weren't sensitive enough. They could miss tiny spots where the cancer had spread. But that has all changed. This is where something called a PSMA PET scan comes in. And frankly, it is a revolution. The best way to think of it is like a GPS for cancer cells. A tiny radioactive tracer gets injected. And this tracer is engineered to be like a heat-seeking missile for a protein called PSMA, which is all over the surface of prostate cancer cells. Then, a PET scan lights up everywhere that tracer has locked on. It shows with incredible precision every single spot of cancer in the body, even tiny ones that older scans would have completely missed. And when you can see the enemy that clearly, you can change how you fight. The old way, with treatments like traditional chemotherapy, well, it was like carpet bombing. It hit everything in the area, cancer cells and healthy cells, which caused a lot of collateral damage and side effects. The new approach, 
It's all about precision missiles. These are therapies specifically designed to hunt down and destroy only the cancer cells, leaving the healthy tissue alone. So here's a look at that new arsenal. First, you've got radio ligand therapy, or RLT. This is just brilliant. It takes that same GPS molecule from the PSMA scan, but this time it attaches a tiny radioactive particle to it. So this smart bomb seeks out the cancer cells and delivers a tiny targeted dose of radiation right to the tumor's doorstep. Then there are drugs called PARP inhibitors. These exploit a weakness in some cancer cells, like those with a BRCA mutation. They block the cancer's ability to repair its own DNA, which causes the cell to basically self-destruct. And finally, immunotherapy, which essentially takes the brakes off your body's own immune system, teaching it to recognize and attack the cancer. It's a whole new world of treatment. Okay, so let's talk about something really important. Because survival is one thing, but living, that's another. A cure that takes away your quality of life doesn't feel like a complete victory. So we have to have a real, honest conversation about life after treatment. One of the biggest fears for men is erectile dysfunction, and we're not going to sugarcoat it. Research from places like Johns Hopkins shows that, yes, the risk is real. After even the best nerve-sparing surgery, a lot of men will experience some level of ED. The numbers are also significant after radiation therapy. Now, I know seeing these numbers can be scary, but I need you to know this is absolutely not the end of the story. Because here's the other side of that coin. For every problem, there are solutions. There are so many effective ways to regain function. You've got everything from the well-known oral medications to highly effective injections to vacuum devices. There are even surgical implants that have incredibly high satisfaction rates among men and their partners. And we can't ignore counseling and support. The key takeaway is this. Sexual recovery is an active process, and for most men, it is a very achievable goal. We've talked about cures. We've talked about managing advanced disease and recovering your quality of life. But what if we could take a step back? What if we could focus on the single most effective strategy of all? The ultimate power move in this whole game is taking control before the problem even starts. This quote from the Harvard School of Public Health, it really says it all, doesn't it? We get so focused on finding cures, and that's vital. But the real miracle, the true win, is preventing the disease from ever happening in the first place. This isn't just a feel-good idea. It is a powerful, evidence-based strategy. So, what can you actually do starting today? Well, Harvard researchers have found that simple lifestyle choices, not smoking, keeping a healthy weight, getting regular exercise, could potentially stop a huge number of cancer deaths before they ever happen. It's not about being perfect, it's just about making consistently better choices. Second, have a smart conversation with your doctor about screening. A PSA test can be a lifesaver, but it's a personal decision. You have to weigh the pros and cons based on your own risk. And finally, know your family history. If your dad or your brother had prostate cancer, your risk can double. And that knowledge, that's power. So I'll leave you with this question. What's one small step you'll take for your health this week? Maybe it's finally making that doctor's appointment. Maybe it's just deciding to take a walk after dinner. Let me know in the comments. Just by watching this, you're already taking better care of your health than most guys your age. Now, please remember, this is for educational purposes only, and it is not medical advice. Always talk to your doctor about your own health, and be sure to subscribe because I'll keep you updated as new research comes out. Let's keep this conversation going and take control of our health together.